So this is the document we will follow. And I want to start first by going to Kaggle. And I'm wondering how many of you are taking part in this competition, in Kitchenware classification competition. For those who don't know what this competition is about, so here in this competition, we have uh, six different categories of images of different kitchen, kitchen items, like cups, glasses, plates, spoons, forks, knives, uh, just these six, right? And the goal of this competition is to build a model that will tell that a glass is a glass, a cup is a cup, uh, a spoon is a spoon, and so on, right? So build the image classifier. And in the, this is how the data looks like. So if you go, if I go to data set images, we will see that how this is how the images look like. And so we have uh, images of cups, spoons, knives, uh, uh, glasses, I guess. Uh, this looks like a glass too, right? So we have this, all these images, all these different images. And for this competition, we used Toloka for collecting the data set. And in this workshop, today I will show you how we did this. So you can do the same thing. And you can also, if you take part in the competition, you can also collect some extra data and uh, train a better model using this extra data. And I want to start by saying, what is Toloka? So Toloka is uh, a platform for um, scalable AI and machine learning development. So you can see that they cover, so they cover the entire machine learning lifecycle, starting from data collection, ending with model monitoring. We will not meet all of that for this workshop today. So we will focus uh, mostly on that. So in, in this uh, case, in this particular example, we collected the data set using the locker. So that was the first one. And then model training, deployment, evaluation, well, mostly training is uh, done by you on Kaggle, right? Um, so the focus for today would be data collection, also a bit of data processing and data annotation. So this is what we will see how to use Teloka for. And Teloka for this uh, for these cases, uh, they provide, how to say, not provide, but there are people uh, on the other end of the screen. So they are uh, doing different tasks. So you can ask them to, for example, take their phone and take pictures of uh, the cups in their house, right? And this is what exactly what we did for the competition. And this is exactly what we will do today in this workshop. So this is the plan. I sent this link to uh, here to the live chat and you also see it here in the description. So you can open this link and it contains everything that we will do today, that we will um, use today. Okay, so I'll, I will close this one. So uh, you, will see, you will use this. And uh, before we start, I want to um, do an overview of what exactly we will cover. So we will do it in two steps. The so first step will be actually collecting the data set. So we will ask the lockers, people on the locker to go and take pictures of the different kitchen items. And then we will, um, some sometimes some of these pictures will be duplicates. So we we'll use Elasticsearch for detecting these duplicates. Then once we have a good enough data set that we get from the locker, we will take this uh, data set and put it to AWS S3. And then there will be another step, which we will also use the locker for. So in this step, we will take the data we collected in the first step, and we again ask the crowd through the locker to uh, say that this is, uh, these are the good, a good, these are good images. Right? So these are indeed forks, uh, spoons, uh, glasses, and so on, right? And then at the end, we will have our final result. So that it will be a CSV file with uh, image URL and class. And this is what we can use for uh, for the competition or for other purposes. And of course, um, this approach that I show you, um, that I show here, um, like it works for pretty much every uh, data set you can think of. So, and actually I used something very similar for another 
uh, a different data set I have uh, I also published on Kaggle which is called clothing data set so here yeah it's somewhat similar except uh, instead of uh, different kitchen stuff you have different clothing clothing stuff so for this one I also used Teloka uh, or at least for parts of this data set I used Teloka for collecting it okay uh, let us start so um, I hope you received instructions to actually do this if you haven't uh, this document has everything that you need so let's say if you watch this in the recording you can just go to the description open this document that I have it here uh, that I have here and go through these steps right so you register in Taloka and uh, then you go to your profile so I have here my profile yep uh, Okay, why it's not working? Um, probably I shouldn't have clicked on this. Yeah, I wanted to click on profile. So here in the profile, first of all, you can enter a promo code here. You just click enter promo code, and then there is a promo code that you can put to get some data, uh, to get some money. Um, and this uh, this amount should be enough to uh, complete this workshop and get even more data. Right. And then another thing you will need to do is you will need to go to integrations and click on this get OAuth token. So you will need to click on this and you will get a token and we will use this token for communicating with the locker through an SDK. Right. So we don't want to do many things uh, manually through the interface. So instead we will use uh, SDK for communicating with the platform. And um, yeah, so this is what you need to do to register in Taloka. And then we also have um, some things that we need to install locally, um, like a bunch of libraries like Jupyter, Taloka Kit, this is the SDK, and then a bunch of other libraries that we will require for the workshop. But what you can do is you can just clone this repo, this one, and run pip install, pip -enf install in this repository install pip first uh, pip -enf first and then you'll have all the dependencies and probably i need to put a bit more information in the readme but luckily like for you you don't need you have everything in this document okay and we will start by going to Taloka, and uh, you, can, you actually see that uh, i already did this a couple of times so I will create yet another one now so i'll just go here <coughs> and click create a project and then I click into it myself. And now we'll see all kind of different templates for uh, for different data set collection or data set annotation tasks. So you see this is uh, image classification um, and so on. So we will not need any of this. I will just scroll all the way down, down and click on blank. And by the way, just in case I will open now um, open the stream on my phone so in case you have questions I will be able to answer them okay now yeah if you have any questions please ask them in uh, in the live chat and I make sure I will make sure that I see them and I answer them okay so yeah, I click here, choose this preset, and now we have this form. So in this form, we need to uh, specify uh, to parameterize to configure our project. So I'll close this one, and yeah, I already prepared some of the things that I will just copy and paste, like title and description, and. Yeah, so this is uh, just name and description. Then the second thing is the task interface. So this is what the lockers will see when they get to do the task. And uh, the interface should be um, hopefully quite, quite intuitive for them to understand what is required. And we will need to put uh, like all the, oops, all these things here in the items section. So I'll make it a bit larger now so you can see what's happening. And here we need 
a few things. So first, we probably need a short piece of text, like text. Let's say it's maybe take a picture and with your phone and upload it, something like that. So that's one thing. Then we actually need another part of the interface where they will upload something. Um, and that is called it's field media file. So I'll just type field dot media file. I don't know why it's doing this. And it uh, kind of auto completes. It shows mm, what we have here. So we don't need to upload videos, just photos. Then we don't need to uh, upload multiple files, just one. False. Then the output would be the name. So this is when we will get the results. So this is how the output field will um, be called. So I'll put image and label what is of kitchen items, something like that. Right, and then we also need another uh, part of the interface where we ask them to specify what exactly they uploaded. Is if it's a spoon, uh, if it's a fork, and so on. So for that, uh, is it field button radio group? Yeah, this is what we need. And yeah, here we have. Um, we will need to add seven buttons, so like six for all the classes, and I will also add other there and this will be class so this is the output where it will go i actually have the entire form here so the entire json which i will just copy now and paste here so then i make sure that there are no typos here so this is how the form looks like so then there is an area where they can take a picture and then six different classes plus other Okay, the form is ready. Now we need to uh, specify what kind of input data we will provide and what kind of output data we will get out of the task. Here we don't have any input data, but still the platform requires us to specify something, to provide something. That's why I will, I will just say add field and I will create this dummy ID field, which will be an integer. I'll save it. Um, yeah, because we simply have to have some input data. Right, so the, the lockers will not see it, but yeah, we'll, we still need to provide some data. And then we have some output data. So first, this is the image. It comes from here. And then the second one, class, comes from here. Right, and I, I will click Edit here, and I remove all the allowed types. So here, basically, everything is possible to have. And in case we add another button here later for some reasons, then we will not need to change our data specification. OK, I'll click Save. And yeah, this the second step is ready. And yeah, I see a question from Adonis. Um, how will we, how will we how we will be able to validate our data. If this includes a model, does this then can be used for classification? Um, yeah, so there will be a second step for validating the data, if this is what you you mean. So I think I showed, uh, I showed you here. So this is the second, the second step. But if you, let's say, if you have your own data, if you don't collect uh, this from the locker and you have to validate your data or annotate your data, then yeah, you can just go directly to second step. I hope I understood your question. Um, yeah, let me know if uh, it doesn't make any sense to you, and I'll try to maybe uh, answer. Anyways, so now um, we finished the first step, general information. We finished task interface, and now we also need to provide instruction for the lockers. And this is, I think, one of the most important steps. So instructions have to be very clear, very precise, as precise as possible, as clear as possible. Then, um, because uh, the quality of instructions directly correlates with the quality of the results you have. So, if you don't have good instructions, then good instruction, then the result will also be not good. 
So I have prepared here the instructions. Uh, I'm sure the instructions, uh, this set of instructions could be improved even more. So just make it look a bit nicer. Okay, like that. Yeah, so here it says uh, what kind of uh, requirements are there for the files. So you have to take your this picture yourself. You don't download it from the internet. Uh, grammarly complaints. Um, then it should be only one item, not multiple, and so on. Right. And uh, if you want, you can also add translations. So you feel free to, with to, to experiment with this. So you can add other languages too, not just English. And with that, I think we can just uh, click on save, and we have created our first project. Now, in this project, we create a pool. So pool is where we actually send tasks. So in the pool, you will see we give more, um, we provide more configuration, like we say how much we want to pay per task, per task suit. So suit is like a screen with tasks that you see, and once you complete, once the locker completes all the uh, tasks in a suit, in the screen that they see, they get some money. Right, so you can you can add multiple tasks in one screen. So we will actually uh, put only one task. We will be able to change this later when we submit tasks. And here overlap is how many to lockers get to do the same task. So here it doesn't make sense to have an overlap because all the images will be different anyways. So overlap is one. But overlap will matter later when we do the second step. Okay, and then audience, <clears throat> in the audience, we specify what kind of uh, performers we are interested in. And uh, yeah, here we say that, let me enlarge it a little bit. So here we say that our task does not contain shocking or pornographic content and language is English. And the lockers who passed the language test, okay, could be useful. Then another fil filter that could be interesting for us is device type. So for example, for this particular task, it's nice if people are already on their mobile phones, so they don't need to uh, take a picture with the mobile phone, then upload it to computer, and then from the computer to submit to Taloka. It's just too much uh, effort and people might submit, instead of doing this, they might try to find for things on the internet instead of actually doing the task. So to make it easier, for us and for them, we also add a filter. So only people who are from a smartphone will see this task. And here I can say that I'm only interested in 50% uh, of uh, the workers, uh, of the lockers who are not super fast. So you see, you know, like there are a lot of people who do things fast. There are people who take time. I can say, okay, I'm interested in 50% uh, uh, like who are not super fast. So who we'll take some time, it's fine, but I want to make sure that the, like the results are good. And then the final uh, section here, quality control, is uh, first I want to say that I don't want to automatically accept uh, results. Um, so here we will need to manually then accept or reject. Uh, so they will not get paid uh, until we accept uh, the submissions or when we reject, they will not get paid at all. And we have seven days to actually review the submissions and say, okay, we accept it or we don't accept. Now, then the, there are a few uh, useful rules for, for us. Um, so one is fast responses. So if somebody submits uh, too many fast responses, then we can ban them for one day, for example. Or majority, majority vote, uh, it doesn't make much sense for us. I will just remove it. And yeah, this is how our pool looks like. And now I can just uh, create the pool. And we should be able to start sending data now to this pool. For that, let me go a little bit down. Yeah, so we need to uh, open Jupyter right now. 
just for a second, I'll stop sharing my screen and I will open my terminal. Okay, so this is uh, my terminal with the project uh, that I showed you. So this is this project. And now I will just run pipenv run Jupyter and I'll create. I will call this, uh, maybe I'll just call it workshop. And here we will do all this, uh, uh, we will write code. Let me take a look at the questions. Uh, questions from James. Uh, how do you ensure that uh, lockers are not just uploading images from the internet? Because, uh, yeah, so that's a difficult one. Then uh, we will do this as a part of the second step. But if you want to really be sure, then uh, what you can do is, let's say, when you have an image, um, you have an image somewhere, so let's say here. So I have an image here, and then I can just click on this and click search image with Google Lens. And then Google Lens will tell you if this image already exists somewhere on the internet. Right? And then this is what you can, so here for this one, I don't know why it cannot find this particular one. But yeah, usually with the clothes and different uh, things, uh, this Google Lens search uh, works quite well. Ah, yeah, you can see it, it found it. So this is what you can also ask the lockers to do. Right? So you can say that I want you to uh, click, to do right click on the image and check uh, it on the internet. And if you find, then say something. So this is how you can uh, make sure that images are not downloaded from the internet. And then another one, because you did not select automatic acceptance, uh, did you have to manually accept every picture? It's possible to manually accept every picture, but we will use the locker to accept pictures. So we will use, uh, as a part of the second step, uh, other tel lockers will look at the picture and they will tell us if the pictures are good or not. Okay, so let me close that. And I think I was here, right? So we will need to close it. I will open this thing. I will copy this thing and I will put it here. So first, um, so we do a bunch of imports. Then I already have to lock, um, um, to lock a token that we will need to use for communicating with uh, with the locker, the platform. So I put it in my environmental variable. So you can just uh, do to lock a token equals and then put your token here. I don't want you to see my token. That's why I'm doing it this way. Right? So now my token is here and I will just create the client. So this is the client I will use to for communicating with the locker. And now I will, so this is our pool ID. I will show you now how to get it. So now we go to our, uh, up to the locker, to our pool we, that we just created. And then we take this ID from the address. And this is our pool ID. Right, and this piece of code will submit 10 tasks to the locker. So what's happening here is, uh, we have a loop to, of 10, right? And then for each uh, iteration of the loop, we create a random ID. And remember, this is this um, artificial ID that uh, we just simply have to have some input, right? We, at the end, we don't care what this input is. The lockers also don't care, but we need to specify some input. That's why I just generate a random number and put it as an input. So this is how I create a task. And then the task suite is the screen that the lockers see, 
And in this screen, they will see only one task, this particular task that we just create. And then I submit all 10 tasks to Toloka. Right? So when I execute this, now if I go back and refresh, we should see, we should see 10 tasks. Uh, see questions from James. How much did you pay per image uh, for the training set? So uh, here per image is one cent and then plus um, uh, one cent more for validation. Um, and then there is also like 30% uh, fee from Teloka, I think. So it's like three cents per image at the end, something like that. Yeah, and I'll do this now for four more times. So then we have like 50 tasks. Range four. So then we will submit it four more times. And now when it finishes, I go here, we should have 50 tasks. Actually, now it will show like uh, when, when it refreshes. Yeah, so we have 50 task pages. 50 tasks. Now we can check the project. So this is how the lockers will see it. So they see the instructions and this is what uh, they see. And I click start labeling and they say, okay, like to collect uh, 50 images, I will need to pay 65 cents right now. So now I click launch. And I don't know, does anyone is following along me doing this thing too? Because I'm, I'm wondering if now multiple people create these tasks, if um, it will make any effect on the speed that well, I will have. But should be pretty fast. So I think now if I refresh, we should be able to see that somebody is already interested in this task. Somebody took the assignment. So somebody, already one person is, is doing this. So while, while they are doing this, let me take a look at the questions again. If it's using majority word, can we assume that the model is an ensemble? Um, Jorge, I'm not sure what you're talking about. So majority word, maybe this is, you mean like when we do the second step, five people, are submitting uh, the, the evaluation and then yeah we will probably talk about this later now maybe it doesn't make much sense i see that uh, already there is one assignment let's see i hope it's uh, safe for work so i'll stop it never appeared to me that i got some un unsafe uh, non-safe work stuff but just to be sure since we're on a live stream i want to to double check, yeah. So here in this example, actually this image is, oops, this image is not good because it's clearly a stock image from the internet, right? So it doesn't look like, um, doesn't look like some something, uh, somebody took a picture of that. Right? And then the, we can also see from the time. So to take a picture, you need more time. I'm wondering how they did this from the internet or from mobile internet. I think we sort of, from a mobile device, it's just simpler to take a picture rather than look on the internet. Let's see what else we have. So it should be a spoon. Yeah, so this one is good. Right? And while the lockers are working on this. Yeah, we see that there are already six complete completed ones, 27, or somebody just dropped 25 active assignments. Um, so now we can see how we can actually get this data from the locker to our Jupyter notebook. Right. So for that, we use this thing called get assignment. So this is a function in the client that we have, get assignment. and yeah, so here uh, we are interested in uh, assignments that are submitted from this pool ID. And 
these are the assignments right? and I can take a look at one of the assignments so this is how it looks like uh, I'll make it look a bit nicer by using to JSON right? so that we see that uh, uh, so this is our task specification. So this is the random ID that we generated. We're not really interested in this. We're interested in these output values, right? So the class is spoon, and this is the spoon. And I will now execute it one more time. And I will, yeah, there is some code for, for preparing this. So we execute this. Um, we execute this request. We get the assignments, and then for each of the solutions, so this is the solution, right? We get the output values. And later, when we accept or reject, we will need to keep the assignment ID. So we keep it here in output values, and then we get all the results here in image results list. So we can see how many already finished. So we have 24 uh, submissions, and for example, this is this is a uh, plate, glass, and so on. So this is the data we have. And now, instead of an image, you see that it's just some ID, right? So we need to have a way to download uh, uh, the image using this ID. In Teloka, for that, we use uh, this. I think it's download attachment, yeah. So download attachment, the first argument is attachment ID, and then the second is where we want to save the attachment, in which uh, stream. And so I already have a piece of code for downloading this. So this is the function that we will use. So it just checks if... Uh, well, there is a special directory for attachments. First, we check if it's already there. If it's uh, if it is, we don't do we don't download second time. But if it's not, then we invoke this function and save the attachment there. And yeah, I will use pathlib here. So we will create a folder called attachments, and then in this folder we have a folder with a pool ID, and all the attachments for this pool will go there. And let me download, now, for example, this one. Um, I think the directory is this one. And then I'll call it image file. So now it downloaded it. So this is where it put it. And I have a, another piece of code that will that we can use for visual displaying this yeah somebody is really into stock images so we will need to uh, discard all that later so let me see if maybe you have something better no, this is a good fork Okay, so this is how we download attachments. And uh, well, yeah, how we get these images. And the next thing we can already do is uh, remember that there was this, uh, like, I, I will not scroll all the way up. Uh, we had seven buttons, so six buttons for the classes, and then the one extra that is other. And what I found out in my experience when using this, when people say it's other, we su they submit something non-relevant. So they maybe submit a frying pan, even though we didn't ask for frying pans, or maybe they submit a screenshot and they put other. So we can just reject all submissions that marked as others. And we can also already detect some duplicates. So for example, Maybe there is um, the same fork already, and this to locker either accidentally or on purpose submitted the same fork. So in this case, we can reject these submissions already. And for that, we will use Elasticsearch and perceptive hashes. So perceptive hashes is a special kind of hash that works for images and uh, 
mm. let's say if you take this image and you resize it like I did here, then these two images, the original one and resized one, will still have the same perceptive hash, but they will not have the same uh, MD5 hash, for example, because the file changed. So we can compute these kind of hashes uh, and also MD5, which is a cryptographic hash, and use that for detecting images, uh, for detecting duplicates. So here um, you can go through this uh, piece of code later to figure out how it's working. I will not spend time on that right now. I just want to show you um, the output. So it will be image, image file. So this function computes hashes for this particular image. And you see that we have the MT5, which is a cryptographic hash, but we also have these three other ones. So these three uh, ones, it's dhash, uh, I think it's difference hash, then dhash is perceptual hash, and then w hash is like wavelet hash. So these are perceptive, uh, perceptual hashes. And uh, as I said, they are quite useful in detecting duplicates. And then we will keep all these hashes, we'll put all these hashes in uh, Elasticsearch, and when, then we can use Elasticsearch for understanding if we have seen this image already or not. And if we have seen this image, then we detect uh, a duplicate and then we reject this. So for Elasticsearch, I will use Docker for running Elasticsearch. So I have this snippet of code already. So I'll just execute it here. You know, I don't know if it's, I'm actually, yeah, I stopped Elasticsearch, good. So now I should already have this image locally. Yeah, tell me something. Looks like it's working. Good. Um, yeah, while it's starting, um, let me copy this piece of code. So this thing will connect to Elasticsearch using login Elastic and password change change me. Yeah, and of course I need to import it from Elasticsearch. Import Elasticsearch. I will put it here so when you execute this, you don't have problems. Okay, yeah, it's still starting. It's taking a while. I should have started it before the, before the workshop. Let's see, maybe it started now. Good, yeah, it did. Just let me take a look if there are any questions. Yeah, I'll answer this question about ChatGPT 3, ChatGPT later. It's not super on topic right now, but we can talk about this at the end. Um, please do remind me, uh, I might forget. I already have, uh, I've already used Elasticsearch for this, so I want to first delete the index. So index in Elasticsearch is like a table in a, data, in a database. So I just want to delete this previous table, previous index that I created, and then create a new one. And yeah, so this is, we say that in this index, we have four different kinds of uh, properties, four different kinds of terms. And each of these uh, terms is a keyword, meaning that we're interested in the exact match. And because you know Elasticsearch is used for text search too. And uh, if you, let's say here, uh, if you want to use it for search, uh, for text search, then the uh, type could be text, for example. But we use only, we only use it for exact matches. That's why the type is keyword. And I think I created it already, right? I don't remember if I executed it. Uh, let's see. I guess I did. And yeah, these are the helper functions that we will use for communicating with Elasticsearch. So first of all, we um, uh, this one find duplicates uh, creates a shoot 
query in Elasticsearch, and should query is a query where at least one, like it's it has this or semantics. So at least one of the these three should match. Um, there is also there are also must queries. So in must it's it has like and semantics. All three should match, but here at least one should match. And if all three matches uh, in the results, it will just have higher ranking. So we sent this query. Um, so we sent a hash, a bunch of hashes, and then we ask Elastic, do you know if we already came across these hashes, uh, at least one of them? And then it gives some results. So if we did come across some of them, then it will show the results and say, okay, yes, you know what? We already did come across them. And uh, these are the attachments where we saw them, right? And then what we can do is we can say, if there is at least one result in, uh, in this query, then we conclude that there are duplicates. But if there are no results, then it's not a duplicate of anything else. And then this first function just saves the hashes to Elastic. And with that, I will now execute uh, this thing one more time. Yeah, it's taking a bit of time, but I guess we can just continue with 30, uh, 38 questions. So we will not wait till all 50 um, are finished. Um, and we will just need to loop over all of them. Uh, over each element of over each image and uh, first if it's other we will reject it then if it's a duplicate of some other uh, image we will reject it and if it's not a duplicate and the class is correct then we can save it and of course i have uh, already a piece of code for that so i'll save some time i will not type it i will explain what's happening here so um, this is the first bit we say if the image submission class is other, so if somebody submitted other in this, we reject it with a comment saying wrong class, we only need cups, glasses, and so on, right? So you submitted something else, that's why we reject um, this, uh, this submission. Then we download the attachment, and then we calculate the hash from this attachment, and then we use this function from here, to uh, to ask Elasticsearch if we have seen these hashes before. If we did, then we reject the assignment, saying that this is a duplicate of another submission, right? And if uh, none of this is true, uh, right? If it's uh, not other, if it's not a duplicate, then we save hash to Elasticsearch, and we keep the results in this filtered results um, list, right? And then. I forgot to import TQDM. TQDM, I will also add it here. Okay. I don't understand what is the problem here. Uh, probably I have, yeah, right. That was a typo. And downloading images takes a bit of time. So you see that uh, somebody submitted wrong class. So you can also parallelize it. So we will not do it here, but uh, there is um, a thing called um, process pool executor Python, and you can use this um, to make this process pool executor or thread pool executor. You can use this to uh, process these things in parallel. Um, so the way I do this is I first download all the attachments in parallel, and then I have this for loop uh, here, uh, and I simply take hashes that were already computed in the for loop or in a process pool before. But to keep it simpler, I will not do it here. And let me take a look at questions. Uh, is it possible to visually check the duplicates found with Elasticsearch? Um, Yes, it is possible. So right now, I don't know if we will see any duplicates. So if we see, then we can visually check this too. 
but I guess for this amount of examples, uh, maybe we will not uh, see many duplicates, but sometimes they do appear, and it's good to have a solution for dealing with these duplicates. Okay, I'm just check, taking a look at the questions right now. Um, okay, it finished, and now in this uh, filtered results, we have the results that, well, as you see, as you might have just filtered, for these results we already downloaded the attachment, and yeah, they are already one of the classes we need, and they are not duplicates. Right now, with these things, we can actually send them to the next step. We can send them to uh, Taloka one more time to check if they are good or they don't satisfy some of the requirements. Because you remember you saw two images that do not satisfy the requirements, so they are stock images. And actually I have more examples. So this is the data set I collected previously. So you see these are stock images, then there are multiple items, um, then it's again a stock image. Uh, this is not, uh, even though like it's uh, it wasn't marked as other it was marked as one like a spoon or something but it's clearly not uh, not kitchen stuff and uh, there are also screenshots right there are also um, like pictures of people uh, a kitchen <laughs> like okay yeah I did ask for kitchen stuff but not for a kitchen yeah so for example there is a picture of a person uh, this uh, yeah so still a lot of irrelevant stuff. That's why we want to uh, filter that well, with the crowd again as uh, the second step. And then let me see what I have in the notes. Yeah, so this is exactly that second step. So now we will go to Teloka one more time and we will create uh, uh, the second project. So go to the projects. I click create project. I'll do it myself. And the same idea. I'll go all the way down. And by the way, uh, feel free to explore these things. There, I think there are some quite good forms. But I'll go with the blank one. And I will copy this there. Right. Task interface, uh, very similar to what we did previously, except this time instead of uh, showing a form for uploading, we show um, like uh, we show the image, actual image. So this is this image view type. Um, and then we also will have two categories of buttons. And I will simply copy it right now, so you will see how the interface looks like. Oh, yeah, so this is the area where we display the image, and there are two sets of um, of buttons. So the first one asks if the image satisfies the requirements, and the requirements is what we showed in the first task. We said that uh, okay, it cannot be a stock image from the internet, it cannot be a screenshot, it should be only one item. So there are all possible uh, options for. Um, for not satisfying these requirements. And then uh, another set is uh, if the image is good, like what is the actual class of this image. So this is how it looks like. And here in the data specification, we will need to change it. So in addition to image URL, which will be here. So this is the input. If I scroll all the way, sorry, if I scroll all the way up, uh, oh wait, it looks like that. Okay, so this is the uh, <coughs> input URL, right? And then um, these two are output, so it's verdict and class. So we see them here. So this is the input, and these are two outputs. We need to add two more things here. So first, we need to remember what was the submission ID. 
for this one. So then later we can uh, accept or reject this submission after it was validated by, by the crowd. So this is the assignment ID. Oops. And type is string. Right, we save. And then another one, uh, attachment ID. So this is the idea. Well, we don't st strictly need it uh, because we will still have this image URL, but just in case we will keep it. So it will be stored as a metadata and uh, we submit it. And later when we get get it back, we will uh, also see this in, uh, in the responses. Okay, should be string. And I again will edit this one, remove uh, a set of allowed values. So everything is allowed here and the same in the class. And the reason I'm doing this is once it happened that uh, I had one set of buttons here and then I decided, decided to add more buttons, but they weren't automatically updated here. Right, and then uh, the lockers could not click on any of the new buttons. The form would reject that. So to avoid that, I uh, first thing I do is I uh, remove this possible allowed values. So then it can be anything. And then instructions for the lockers. Again, this is a very, this is the crucial step here. It's very important to give uh, a clear set of instructions here. And here in this task, I have, um, the, the instructions I have uh, is these are the requirements and I think I just copied that uh, with minor modifications from the previous project. But also what I include here is images of what uh, good uh, pictures look like and uh, what not good pictures look like. Right? So they have examples, they know what they should reject and uh, okay, screenshots, multiple items and so on. Now I will copy this and I will put it here. Okay. Yeah, and uh, of course you can also add translations. I will not do this. I will just click save. And again, we create a pool. You have seen how to do this. Um, I will put price one cent, overlap five. So here, the same task suit, the same screen uh, will be evaluated by five people. Uh, this is actually controllable later. When we submit, we can specify the overlap. Um, yeah, but we will have overlap here for this one. Then for the audience, so let's uh, use English. Uh, I, I don't know if I should uh, keep this one or not. Uh, let's keep the, this one. And I don't think we need any other uh, other filters. Just this one is enough. So here they can do this from the computers. It's fine. Uh, they shouldn't uh, be on the mobile devices for this one. And quality control, uh, automatic responses are okay here, even though some people can submit some crap some not good stuff, but we have this um, this rule here that will ban them if they do it too fast. And then uh, probably I should uh, spend some time figuring out what this is doing here. But for now, I, I don't know to be honest, like how exactly this is working. So for now, I'll just delete it. Uh, but probably this one should also be helpful for controlling the quality. Now I'll create a pool. And now we will see how to get the things we uh, pulled from the locker so far and how to pull them in this, put them in this pool. Okay, so where are we? So we did this. Uh, right, so the next thing we need is uh, here in the interface, we need to have an image URL. So we need to put our images that we just downloaded to somewhere. So we cannot just simply take the image from the locker uh, and use the locker URL because it might be um, like they are not public. Um, you cannot 
easily display them for the lockers. Uh, the easiest way to do this is to put them in a public S3 bucket. If you use AWS uh, or any other cloud solution will also work here. Uh, probably there are some image hostings uh, that have APIs then maybe you can upload there and then they will give you uh, a URL that we can use. It uh, doesn't matter, it just has to be a publicly accessible URL. So now I'll stop sharing my screen for a second and I will go to my AWS terminal or console with API. I should already have um, a bucket. So yeah, this is the bucket I have. So you see, I already experimented with this uh, a little bit. So that's why I already have like four different uh, uh, poles here, pool, pool IDs. And one of these is actually what um, uh, we used here. So this is the uh, this is the bucket, and the interesting, the relevant part here for this bucket is this bucket policy. So you will need, if you want to, also use S3 for this for uploading images to uh, S3. You will need to have this uh, this bucket policy that allows public uh, get access to the bucket. Okay, and then I have a piece of code that. Uh, actually, there are two things. So the first one is uh, this code takes an image that the locker submitted and resizes it slightly. So it uh, makes sure it's no longer than 1000 by 1000 because most of the images that the locker submit, I think uh, we can see it here. So they are pretty large. So the three megabytes, five megabytes, four megabytes. And uh, uh, like I don't know if I can see here, yeah, like the eight megapixels. We we don't need that large images, right? So especially if we are going to use it for deep learning for classification, at the end we will resize them by, to a small uh, squares of 299 by 299. So we don't need that big images. So that's why we have this make thumbnail function. And I, will, I, I think I have this code that creates. Um, so here I will create a thumbnail folder. And yeah, this piece of code will create a thumbnail from, uh, let's say this one. Oops, wrong one. It should be attachment URL, uh, ID. So now thumbnail will contain path to the thumbnail, to this uh, little image. And then another function that we'll use will upload to S3. So put it here. So yeah, it's pretty simple. So it just uploads this to S3 using this upload file and it constructs a public URL. And if you're not running this on EU West 1, the URL you will have should be slightly different. So probably it will be enough to just replace uh, this part with your region, uh, but uh, please double check it. Okay, and now I can just upload thumbnail to, what's the name of this? Toloka Kitchenware. And the result will be image URL. No such bucket. Yeah, of course, I don't know why I didn't copy it. Okay, now this uh, image URL, let me open it in cognito mode to make sure what's happening with my... Yeah, I needed to copy this thing. So in can see that yeah we can download it even in incognito. The, I'm doing this to make sure that uh, my because I'm logged in here with AWS, so I want to make sure that even if I don't 
logged in, if I'm not, not logged in, I can still see the image. Um, let me take a look at the questions. So I see that there is a question, is Taloka kind of AWS ground truth? Yes, I think AWS ground truth exactly is um, crowdsourcing uh, the platform too. So Amazon has a thing called Mechanical Turk. Mechanical Turk, yeah. So uh, AWS ground truth is a thing on top of Mechanical Turk. Hmm. But in my opinion, so I, I used Mechanical Turk quite a lot in the past. In my opinion, uh, in my experience, the local is much nicer. So for example, I uh, also tried to create a task for collecting data set, uh, images data set with Mechanical Turk, and it's very, very, very complex. So that there is a kilometer long uh, documentation describing how you do this, but in Taloka, you just drop uh, this file, um, file upload kind of thing, and then you have it. So that's, that's a lot simpler. Okay, so now, <clears throat> Now what we need to do is take all uh, all these things, filtered results. We already downloaded the attachments. So now what we can do is just upload them to S3. So let me take this piece of code. So did you see, this is what it's doing. So it takes the uh, attachment ID. It creates a thumbnail for this attachment. Then it uploads it to S3 and then it keeps, it saves the URL. So let's execute that. And uh, actually what you should probably do is instead of using a separate loop, loop for that, you can just put it in, in this loop here. So say when we oh, save hashes, um, we saved the hashes and now we um, create a thumbnail, then we upload it to S3 and we to this. So I'll comment it here, but yeah, I think it should be one loop. Um, yeah, so now the images are there. Uh, they are in our public bucket and we can upload them to, uh, to Taloka. So before I do this, we need to prepare the data set slightly. So this is, uh, I prepared. So um, here, when we created uh, the interface, the project, we said that uh, there are three, there are two, no, there are three input values, right? So in the image URL, this is here, the URL that we display, and there is also attachment ID and assignment ID. So this is something that we just sent to the locker, and when we get the answers, we also get it back, but we don't display it to the lockers. And in our data, we have, we call it image, not attachment ID. So this simple function is doing the renaming. Right, so right now, what we have is, so this is in the format that Toloka, the project we created, this is in the format expects. And now we can submit one more time. So this will be, um, yeah. So I'll copy this code now and I will now tell you what it's doing. Okay, so this first uh, code snippet is creating, uh, is taking this, this list and chunks them into uh, sub lists of size 10. Right, so I will execute now and you will see that the length of this uh, result batches is four. So the first batch is of size 10. And this is what each screen for the lockers will look like. So it's, um, you know, in the lockers language, it's called a suit. So this is what a locker gets to evaluate. And there are 10 tasks in one suit. And so that's why we take uh, all the submissions and we chunk them into, four, into uh, like a 10 four batches, right? Each of size at least at most 10. And yeah, now we will just submit this. Again, I will use this pool ID. So this is the pool ID. 
and I will take these batches and then I will iterate over these batches and then for each element in the batch I will create a task and then there will be at most 10 tasks from which I will create a suit and you see this overlap 5 so it means that at least or five talkers will see this task suit and they will uh, uh, make their judgments right and now I can just submit I will remove this async to make sure that uh, I if there are some errors I will be able to see them okay it works now if I refresh we will sh we will see these tasks that I, I just submitted yeah so there are four task pages and remember that there is also overlap of five there are 35 tasks on these four task pages and now yeah we can check how it looks like so these are the instructions and you see that it's like one out of ten if I make it a bit smaller so this is how it looks like right. yeah so for example this one is uh, clearly uh, doesn't satisfy the requirements and some of them others too I don't know what this is okay so this is how it looks like now we just click start labeling and click here and now it started and while it's doing this let me check if there are any questions are there other good alternatives to Taloka mm, I only use Mechanical Turk and Taloka so there are other platforms but you can just uh, check uh, crowd sourcing platforms and then see uh, which one you like I, I, I like to look I think it's a very good platform uh, but yeah do your research if you are interested in this so are there other questions Yeah, there is this question about chat GPT uh, I, I don't know if I should start with uh, talking about chat GPT Let, let's see how how is it going with this one we see that already uh, people are working on this yeah we are pretty close to finishing Or are accepted yeah so far while they are working on this what we can do is we can start preparing code for actually pulling data from there because it will also take a bit of time to go through this so uh, we already know how to get data from Taloka this piece of code is slightly different so because we automatically accept uh, accept submissions here status um, that we ask is accepted not submitted and the pool ID is this new pool ID right? and now let me just execute this and I also want to show you how it looks like so it looks slightly different from what we saw previously it looks slightly different so first of all we see the solution solutions so it's multiple for each of the task in the suit we have a solution so this is what the lockers uh, put there and we also have tasks so this is what we sent there so assignment ID attachment ID image URL so they are in two different uh, fields so we need to somehow put them together and for that we use a zip function so I will show you how it looks like so this is a zip so we zip over tasks and solutions and then it goes uh, 
So the first task, the first solution, second task, second solution, and so on, right? And then we put them together in uh, in a row, in a single row, in a single dictionary. And then at the end, we have this list with verification results that contains like all the submissions. And I'm wondering how many we already have there. That should be enough to uh, to start analyzing this data. So now we will turn this into pandas, the yeah, pandas data frame. So this is how our data frame looks like. So we have attachment ID, we have the image URL, assignment ID, and verdict is uh, like whether the image uh, satisfies the requirement or not, and then the class. And so now what we can do is we can uh, group by assignment ID, because remember we had overlap of five. So we can group by assignment ID and then see what is the most common verdict, what is the most common class there. And uh, uh, yeah, based on that, we can take a decision. So if, for example, the verdict is yes, then we keep the file. Uh, and uh, yes, in classes, uh, we still have the option other. So if it's other, we don't keep it. And we will also look at the agreement, like uh, if the lockers agree with each other. Um, so let me take this piece of code and I will execute this. So we'll, this is what I just described you, what we want to do. So this piece of code is doing exactly that. And I think I forgot to import from collections, import counter. So, yeah, it's here. It just, yeah, this way is better. So, <coughs> we do, <coughs> we group by assignment ID, and then uh, here the counter, this uh, expression, what it's doing, is just taking all the different classes from five different people, and then it counts. I probably can execute this and show you how it looks like. So this is how it looks like. So we saw that uh, four people said that this thing is a plate, and four people say that uh, this satisfies the requirement. And it's not five because remember when I started to pull the data, it didn't finish yet. So that's why I guess uh, just the fifth person didn't finish. Right, and then we also take the most common verdict, with the most common class. And we see at the, we look at the agreement, like how um, if people agree within uh, each group. So uh, I also included these uh, counters here, but I don't think we actually need them. Um, so this is how our results uh, result looks like. So then for each assignment, we have the agreement between each group. And agreement is like, let's say if two people, there are four people in general to say, it is uh, it satisfies the requirement to say it doesn't satisfy then we just go uh, with the yeah we just know that uh, they disagree with each other and um, yeah sometimes there are still people who maybe don't take a lot of time to think about the answer and this could be one of the ways uh, for improvement because here we just accept all the responses but one thing that we can improve here is we can submit, um, when we submit the assignments, we can add uh, some data for which we already know if it's a good thing or not. Um, like for example, we know that, um, let's say this one, we know it's good, but we say we know that this one is not good, right? And if we have this data that we labeled ourselves, we can add this information to Taloka when we submit it to the pool, right? And then we can take a look at what people reply. How do they evaluate this? Uh, I think it's like it's called gold standard uh, or something like this. Like basically we know the evaluation, what evaluation should be for this and what people reply. And if they don't, uh, provide good replies, we just ban these lockers, right? And then at the end, only good lockers um, uh, take, uh, can participate in our projects. 
Okay, here I did not do this. So here we can just look at the agreement and we automatically accept responses. And let me execute this one more time. So hopefully more, we have more replies. Um, yeah, so this is our results. And now what we can do is this simple piece of logic. So we say that we accept results if the most common verdict is yes, if the most common class is not other, and if the lockers agree, at least like 50% of them agree, then we accept this, and otherwise we reject it. And we can actually look at um, how many, yeah, so we will keep 85% of the data and we will reject uh, 15, uh, remaining 15% of the data. Right. And now we can just use the locker again, uh, to locker SDK, client, uh, there is accept, accept assignment, right? So then we can, for each of the accepted ones, we can accept them or we can reject uh, the assignment and say, okay, like, sorry, you didn't go, do a good job. That's why we're rejecting your assignments. And yeah, so this piece of code that I will execute right now, we are not yet accepting or rejecting, but this is the final, oops, I, I wanted to copy. So this is how our final result will look like. So if you're following along this tutorial and you want to take part in this kitchenware classification, so if, all, if everyone who is following this uh, want to contribute a data set to the competition, what you can do is you can just send me the CSV files and then I can put them together in one big CSV file and then we can use this information for training a better model. So this is our like final result. So it probably helps to save this. So do data, data frame final, do CSV, I don't know, data 2022, 12, uh, 15 CSV. Index false, right? So this is the final data set. And of course, if you do this later for the competition or for some, un, uh, for some other uh, purpose here at the beginning, instead of submitting 50, uh, uh, 50 maybe you want to submit, uh, I don't know, 1,000 or 2,000. Um, so at the end for the competition, I think I collected uh, almost 10,000 or it was 9,000 something images. Uh, yeah, so you can uh, go crazy. I think the promo code uh, that we have will let you collect uh, at least uh, one or two thousand um, images. Okay, and then the last step is accepting and rejecting. So I will take this thing and I will run it. And yeah, that's actually end of the workshop. So we saw how to uh, create a project into Loco for collecting the data set uh, uh, ima of images, right? So we saw how to programmatically submit there. I'll go here at the beginning. Right, so we saw that. Then we saw how to use the Loco SDK to get uh, the images, to compute hashes of these images, to make sure that they are not duplicates. Then we resized these images, we uploaded them to S3, and we used these uploaded images in the second step where we again created another project in Taloka, and we asked the crowd from Taloka to validate that these images are good. And we kept only good images, and then at the end we have this CSV file that I showed you, um, and this CSV file, uh, data from this CSV file we can actually use for this uh, for improving our models in the kitchenware classification competition. Okay, do you have any questions? So you've uh, you've asked already quite a few questions, and then uh, if no, I'll take a look at this uh, chat GPT one. Yeah, please, please try this. So in our Slack, we have a channel for um, for the competition. So you, 
I will actually show you how to find this channel. So if you go to the competition, um, in the overview, it says that this is the channel in Slack that we use. So please share the data sets that you collect with the locum there. And uh, yeah, let's have fun taking part in this competition. Um, so thanks a lot for uh, joining me today in this workshop. I see that there are no more questions, so I guess I'll have to take a look at this ChatGPT one. Do you think that ChatGPT will make majority of data analysts, engineers, data scientists obsolete? No, I don't think it will. Do I need to explain why? <laughs> I mean, it's an awesome platform. I use it. I already included it in my um, workflow. Uh, it's helpful, but it's still like sometimes it's not correct. But for example, we now in the company where I work, Wilix, we have a hackathon. And uh, in this hackathon, we have multiple projects. And the uh, description for these projects and possible tasks, learning tasks for the project. Uh, I used ChatGPT to generate these things. And it was quite good, right? So then it was a good uh, first step. Then later we refined. So it saves some time. So I think ChatGPT is quite good at giving you the first initial um, version, let's say, that you later improve. So, mm, if there are no more questions, uh, I want to thank you for joining me today. Um, please try to look uh, to get more data, share the data in the competition channel. And that's all for today. So um, have a great rest of your day.